Hey, yeah. This is Lewis. And uh, this is the beginning of uh, the Making Comics series. In this series, I think what you should expect is necessarily me talking comics, how I make comics, featuring Oluwatuka, book two, which is the comic that I'm currently working on. So it's going to be pretty much like a live example of actually making a comic, a product, uh, a project. So you will be pretty much uh, listening to me talk about how I'm making this comic uh, as the days go on till its completion. So far, it's been quite some time, you know, since I did my own personal comics. I've been uh, doing comics mostly as a freelance for a while now. But I think it's high time that I go back to doing uh, my personal comics. Uh, because that's the reason why I do comics anyways in the first... The beginning is because I like telling stories and uh, for me that aspect of it is what keeps me excited about doing art in general anyways so uh, it's very important for me to uh, make comics regardless of whether uh, the end result is what I really wanted or it isn't what really came out of when I set it out so yeah let's, 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 let's go on this journey I got my coffee here ready I got my tools on set and let's talk comics. So since it's been a while since I did uh, comics, I took a break after finishing book one of Oluwatuke in 2019. I was producing it as an online comic mostly because I wanted uh, people to know what I was making without putting any kind of obstruction from them being able to see it. Uh, usually when you're starting out and you're making your very fast comic, it's not clever to put all kinds of restrictions uh, for people to see a comic because people don't know you they, they've not seen your work the, you haven't built enough trust with people to a point where they are willing to sacrifice uh, their own money and time to be uh, to see your thing so if there's a lot of restrictions for example like a paywall behind your content and it's your very fast content you're putting out you're probably only going to get a, a few people that are close to you that are going to buy this kind of thing. And that's if you're actually able to convince them, you know. You're probably going to get your mom, <laughs> uh, your friends, your close friends, uh, and uh, a, a few more relatives buying in on your, on your, in your work. And you're not going to get uh, the actual excited people uh, that actually love comics and the stuff that you're putting out uh, buying your content and this is a, a huge problem because you need you need people that are actually excited about your content uh, to be the ones that read it because they are the ones that are going to talk about your content uh, after buying it they're the ones going to go to their forums their platforms talk about your content and have more people uh, come to read your stuff so you want to avoid putting out a paywall in the beginning you want people to be able to get to your content which is the reason why i started out on webtoons just putting stuff out first of all comics were not popular here in africa very few people made make comics i remember in high school i was literally almost the only guy making comics i was the odd man out completely the circle vagabond, the outcast <laughs> of, 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 of high school society. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying that I sucked, like literally that I was uh, like 
some sort of learner or some sort of like weirdo of course i'm a weirdo uh making comics automatically put you in the weird uh category uh when it comes to uh, high school hierarchies but at the same time it's only these days that it's now cool uh back then it wasn't you know as cool uh but people slowly became accepting of it um and by the time i was leaving school <laughs> it was actually cool to make comics uh and a lot of young generation uh of that high school had now been uh sort of motivated uh by reading some of the comics that i had made and what really kept me in the game was because comics were not the only thing that i was doing i was also quite good at sports and i loved sports and i'd play football and all this kind of stuff and all these activities they kept me uh kind of grounded and capable of keeping my own <laughs> ego uh in a good place where it's not depleted uh when people complain about me making comics and being kind of childish in a way um i still had spots to sort of back me up and keep me uh, in that much and much ground <laughs> but even still um uh making comics was still uh, quite frowned upon not everyone was really uh, motivated but interestingly these people did read my stuff uh regardless of the stuff the, the, the kind of words they mentioned uh, about it they still read my stuff they still <laughs> interested in seeing what I was making uh but that's how things are that's how life is you know and everybody's gonna you know be supportive of what you're trying to do with comics everyone's going to be uh having their own uh, private opinions of it uh in order to maintain their ground in the hierarchy and uh what you're supposed to do is pretty much keep on doing what you love keep on doing what you enjoy and don't let uh these opinions stop you from doing uh comics so this is how every stories told in the beginning is that you must be able to endure uh, the the beginning stages of I'm gonna take a sip of coffee here you must endure the beginning stages of ridicule in order to be able to uh create the stuff that you want to create this create the stuff that keeps you um happy you know which is comics and which is the reason why uh, you're here listening to me today so first of all you got to say no to the naysayers you know you got to you got to keep those guys far you know you want to keep your friends that love and support you with what you do very close uh because these are the people that are going to read your content first they're the first guys that are gonna go to your site they're gonna buy your first books these are gonna be your best friends your close mates you know they're the first guys that are give give you ideas on what you should do with your comic tell you when it sucks <laughs> if your comic sucks your friends will tell you uh man look this beginning bit really it sucks balls bro it sucks balls really you got to change this statement this sounds very quirky very weird it's not quirky enough uh and then they're going to give you opinions on how, what they think uh about the story and i think your job is to listen to them and make your own decision you know your friends may make um your opinions about your comic and be like oh this sucks balls this is good uh but it's up to you in the end to make the final decision on whether you think uh they're telling the truth or uh <laughs> they're just messing with you so it, it's all up to you but usually your friends are, are going to be the very fast people because they care about you you know they want to see you uh you want to see you succeed uh, if you have friends that just literally deplete your energy all the time you make something just, everything's all negative and there's no opinions on where you, you know good opinions where you should take the story or good opinions on where uh you should take your artwork or etc and they're just literally depleting you telling you how it sucks then these these are people you shouldn't be around anymore because whatever you want to do now it's it's a whole new you. You, you you have to be it you know you have to be it you have to talk it you have to be around people that support you doing exactly that so 
you want to make sure that your environment is perfect for this and when i talk about environment this is a very very uh old topic and which is really important because organisms are what the environment is really uh your environment will dictate you as an organism uh where how far you're gonna go and uh, you know what kind of work you're gonna be able to make is because of your your environment how far you you're gonna push yourself with with the content you make i'm gonna take another sip of coffee <clears throat> ah, i'm loving this ah coffee in the morning it's also, also great you know <laughs> uh, so the environment is going to dictate uh, where you're going to go with this career uh, with anything that you want to do whenever you're starting out your environment must be pretty much tailored to make sure that you actually succeed with that specific thing that you want to do for example in comics um, creating the right environment means getting the right kind of people uh, around you that are gonna uh, encourage you to make comics right you're gonna tell them oh man uh, i want to make a comic and then they'll get you resources they'll you know they'll be the type of people that will you know forward you to all kinds of cool artists they find online they're like hey man i saw this cool artist he's awesome he's dope and I think you could learn something from him. They're not going to be the type of people that will tell you, Hey, man, I met this cool artist online, man. He's way better than you, man. You, he's way better than you, man. You got to stop. You know, you suck. <laughs> this guy is awesome, man. You, you, I don't even know why you're still... Man, you're still doing... What you're still doing is fake stuff, you know. It's it's just amateur shit, you know. You got to... You gotta check this other artist out. He's way better than you. <laughs> and we all know how that does uh, hit our ego, our emotions, and how it makes artists feel. Because, you know, you're putting your whole energy and dedication into making this artwork. And someone's out here, <laughs> you know, uh, really, really uh, downplaying you by presenting someone who's way more experienced than you are and who's been in the industry for way much longer and has been drawing for way longer than you have uh so you know you gotta be careful when people like that start talking you gotta you gotta you know put yourself into perspective remember you're starting you know you, you, it takes time for everyone everyone's running their own race uh it, it, it'll take a while for you to to be able to understand uh, the same things that person understands because he has more experience than you have uh, in order to make good comics etc let's talk about or watch you could book to what i'm doing uh how i'm starting out this time once again i'm starting from zero <laughs> now, i'm not starting from zero though uh i already have book one out so i'm starting i'm starting from a point but I also feel like I'm starting from zero. Uh, it's just how it feels with every single new uh, story you have to make, with every single new artwork you have to make. It just feels like you're starting from zero. You know, you gotta re motivate yourself, re encourage yourself to be able to make, you know, this kind of stuff all the time. And uh, right now, this is how I f feel, you know, making a lot of good book too. And uh, I hope that, you know, it's sort of encouraging to you if you're feeling the same way, you know, uh, about making art for the first time in a while or making art for your first time in general. You know, it's always quite difficult, you know, to uh, sort of get yourself back into the game, uh, motivated to get get content done. So book book two. Uh, the first very the very first thing that I have been trying to get uh, you know into the ballpark is making research right so for the past <laughs> I think a year I've just been making research on what I want to do with book too you know uh, i already have an idea on where i want my story to ultimately end up uh and i've discussed this with uh 
I drew and, and sell on the story and where I wanted to go. Uh, but it, discussing the story with them always helps me. In other words, uh, it helps me, uh, you know, revise some of my ideas, see whether they make sense ultimately from a reader's perspective and less from a, a, a creator's perspective. And it's the very reason why Drew and Sal are very important to me in the process of making uh, Oluwatuka is that they give me that reader's perspective. Uh, and usually the chapters that I've made without getting an insight from Sal and I've just put them out or Drew, uh, I, I have not had enough of a reader's uh, insight on them. So uh, sometimes, you know, you have already a biased opinion on how you know your story is being told because you are the creator you know your story but your readers don't know your story yet so every time they're reading it's new everything's new to them so uh, getting those opinions uh, help to see whether you know the effect that you wanted to give out is equally the same as what is being produced or what you've produced so uh yeah back to uh, how i'm making the comics so for a year i've been making research uh to be honest is is that easy to create a believable world especially now with the logical way i'm creating an underworld and those don't exist and it's i'm not sure whether they exist to be honest uh but in the one i'm creating doesn't exist it's p purely fictional uh, best of mythology and I'm trying to create a believable one uh, Uluwatuka takes place in the underworld and when it comes to the underworld that means multiple color cultures you know it means multiple things are going to inform uh, how the world looks like and how people there behave because of the environment uh, and again, environment, very important. <laughs> yeah, very important, my friend. So how the environment uh, informs what they do uh, in that world, how they live and what they think is important to them and what they think isn't really important you know, to them. And since Ananda was supposed to pretty much represent people that were alive and are now dead, that means there's going to be people from different times different 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 timelines you know uh how how i explain this is pretty much someone that died in uh <laughs> 2000 bc uh or whatever you know 300 bc uh is pretty much meeting up with someone who's died from like 1000 a.d yeah <laughs> how do you make that make sense you know to to them as people in 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 that culture in that world and their different ways of understanding life uh so the idea is is, is quite complex when you try to think about it that way and i try my best not to complicate it for both myself and my audience i need to build the idea down and make it make sure that the world is believable in a time scale kind of format that these are lots of cultures down here and different perspectives down here from different timelines but at the same time i also want to make uh it an exciting journey uh for anyone that reads the story so world building very important thing is the very reason why i'm doing so much research especially for this second book uh the culture perspective of it is really important especially when it comes to making the type of comic that i'm making uh, so most most of it since it's a really wide comic lots of cultures involved uh i'm mostly focusing a lot on uh, african culture uh as the core core uh mover of the entire story because from an African perspective, I can tell the story. Uh, from a Slovakian perspective, I'm not 100% sure or confident that I can tell a story from their perspective. So I could only invoke a few things that I know and read about their mythology and fit it in into this kind of story that goes deep into African mythology and uh, help that uh, 
widen and broaden my world uh, by having hints in tiny segments of uh, other people, uh, European mythology, Asian mythology uh, in there as well. Uh, it helps broaden the world, make it more believable, make it more versed, uh, and, uh, which is very important. I've also had to do a lot of research on, uh, you know, especially the community that is going to be at the very core of uh, book two, which is uh, Haitian mythology, uh, which is going to be very, very, very important in, in the uncovering of book two. Uh, so uh, what you should be looking at for that, uh, there's going to be lots of uh, voodoo uh, uh, covered in this next book. Uh, and that has involved me having to make a lot of research on, on that specific topic. So research is very important when you're making comics, uh, so that when you make comic, uh, people that are uh, in these types of places uh, have a much more deeper connection because it now feels more human, feels more relatable. People feel the culture makes more sense. Uh, regardless of it being such a mytholi mythological world, mythical world, uh, fictional world, and it still uh, sort of has this earthed or grounded type of thing to it, uh, which is important because the truth about even creating any kind of mythological world or mythical world or fictional world, um, even if it's science fiction and it's not, you know, a fantasy like what I'm creating, um, you still need some grounded levels of reality of Earth uh, when creating these worlds. Uh, so the research bit really important. You you know what to refer to. You know what to uh, hit on uh, when you're doing your comic. Now it's very easy to spend the next five years doing research. <laughs> And you'll never be satisfied uh, with what you're creating. In the end, it's still your story. Regardless of all the research you'll make, uh, you're still creating fictional characters. You're still making all this make sense in your own uh, fashion, in your own kind of retelling format. And uh, there's no amount of research that is going to make you make a good comic. Uh, it's, there's just no real number of that if i make this much research my comic will make sense uh not really um you could make some research uh and the rest is all up to the people that read it uh to tell you whether uh you, you did a good job or not with uh with what you did with the story in the end the hard work is still or the hardest part of it is still up to you to make dialogue to make uh, to create backgrounds that make sense uh, and to create uh, there's still a very 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 uh, wide step to call, to uh, tackle which is script you know uh, so after making my research making having my references ready I began working on script and how I work on script is is uh, pretty much how I work on script is probably not very conventional. I I just sit down. I'm, I've read through all my references. I'm just sitting there and I start writing. You know, I've come to realize that it's very difficult to write just uh, by thinking. You can. I've come to realize that you do your thinking of the story by just writing. Uh, you might spend forever sitting there wondering what your characters are gonna say, thinking forever, wondering, oh, he's gonna say this, then he's gonna do this cool thing, and then he's gonna, and you just sit there, probably in your bed or on your chair thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and oh man you're never gonna get there because if you're not writing if you're not solidifying uh what you're thinking then you're never gonna 
reach there. You're never going to get there. You're always going to be, oh, I almost got it. I almost got it. I almost got it. Almost there. I almost had it. I almost had it. You know, you're always going to be in that stage. Mostly because uh, that's how our brains work. Our brains just have ideas after idea. It's kind of like a dream, you know, when you wake up. Sorry, when you're dreaming. And then one day you're at the beach. You're drinking your juice. And another moment you're in a classroom listening to a teacher who's pretty much boring at best then at the moment you completely in like space uh playing with moon rocks or playing table tennis with some alien on some random planet it is it's just dreams are random and that's just how your brain works you know your brain just shows you how your brain is sorry your dreams just show you how your brains work you know they just it's just random it's idea after idea after idea never ever completing something concrete so that's how your brain works and that's how your thinking works without when you try to write by just thinking you get to write by writing you think by writing it's the best way to write sorry <laughs> that's a very complex line of thought uh but yeah you know i set it down and write and make sure that i get uh as much writing done and gotta take another sip of coffee So I just sit down and write and write and write and write and write. As I'm writing, ideas start flowing in. Uh, the story starts to make sense slowly by slowly. I write the first draft. I let it go. I come back the next day, look at it. It looks shitty sometimes. <laughs> and other times it makes sense. Then I start writing again. Now the plot starts to develop. I know where I'm supposed to go. Uh, I already have an idea of probably where I want the story to take to go uh, in the end. But how to get there is a whole other matter. What should my characters say? How are they going to behave? You know, this and this is going to happen. Okay, why is this character? How is this character going to behave when that happens? Is it a very confrontational character? Is he going to, you know be against the status quo is he going to be like oh man uh there's this character that is you know pretty much dominating everyone who's gonna stand up to them you know which type of character is going to behave which way so it's, it's just kind of all those tiny things that i think about when i'm writing uh comics now is there a huge difference between writing for comics and and film and animation probably not much really uh writing is writing stories of stories tell a good story people are gonna read it whether it's made for animation or comics so uh how do you create dialogue you know how do you make your characters move how does the story move forward you know when you get your characters ready well, I usually have this line of thought where I have a character that has certain beliefs and another character that has certain beliefs. When these two characters collide because of maybe their differing beliefs, then I have a story. Then I have what to do because it's in that confrontation that I actually have what to say. If my two characters are having similar beliefs, then I'm not going to have much of a story, you know. I'm probably going to have a couple of gags, but, you know, with these two characters doing things that they both like. But 
I'm probably not gonna get much of a compelling story and my story is not gonna move forward. So whenever I wanna push my story forward, I gotta have two characters on set that are having differing beliefs or are having some sort of confrontation um, because of their beliefs always. Uh, that's the reason for confrontation. So when you're writing, uh, you wanna have uh, characters that are not similar when you have characters that are similar, then everything fills off uh, and your story doesn't move forward. So these are these are all tiny things that I've learned as I've make I've made comics over over time. Uh, confrontation is good for you to have. I used to be afraid of confrontation in my between my characters. You know, I always wanted my my main character good, but as I slowly continued making comics i realized uh my main character doesn't necessarily need to be good in other words he has to just be a person and people are capable of both good and bad things and that's how you have a realistic character that's how you have a character with a set of beliefs that's how you have confrontation because all characters will not have the same beliefs that's how you get dialogue because when two characters with different beliefs are now talking about their beliefs, they're now confronting each other about their beliefs. They're pushing themselves towards their goals because they believe so and so does this or so and so. People like us, like uh, Seth Godin says, uh, when you have a tribe, people like us do things like these then you have uh, a place to base all your uh, confrontation on and your, uh, and your dialogue off. I'll give you a, world, a real world example. For example, let's say uh, you have a belief that, uh, that some type of lake in your country is divine. It's sort of like a god to you, and that is your belief that that lake is divine. Then there's another type of people that believe the lake is just a source of food, and so they should exploit it. Now you have two people who are against each other because this type of person that believes that the lake is a deity and it should not be bothered by people putting in all kinds of machines and and boats and all these types of things and fishing from it and literally exploiting it it's exploiting its purity as a god to that person then you're going to have conflict now you're going to have confrontation between these two groups of people the ones that believe the lake is divine and those that believe the lake is just a source of food, source of fish uh, for them to exploit and have what they need to do to, to have their daily uh, uh, meals, really. So this, this is just how stories really come together and how if you lack that, you don't have a story. So these, these are all my thoughts uh, in making uh, Uwatuka Book 2. I'll be coming back with more uh, on making comics. And until next time, my friends, dream of space.